right, welcome back everyone. It's lovely to see you all. Let's go straight into the superpower. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into your superpower, however you normally do that. By repeating your word or phrase, using your anchor, or by focusing on your subject and everything you love and appreciate about them. And allow, feel, start to feel that, that feeling in your chest, your heart opening, your chest expanding as you feel that love and appreciation and allow that light or energy to shine out from your heart Very good. And now allow that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head, and out to your feet. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love. Good job. And now allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing. Very good. And now allow that light or energy to fill the, yourself as a child, the little you. Love that little you just for existing. Imagine that, that little you, yourself as a child, filled with that light, that energy, that power. And then allow that power, that light to overflow from that little you and fill your whole childhood, shining the light into any darkness, filling everything, everyone, every event, every circumstance every experience with this light, this energy, this power. Loving it all anyway, exactly as it is. That's where your power lies. Very good. And now allow that light or energy to overflow from you and fill everyone who's on the call today. All those who are on camera, those who are off camera today, Fill each one with that light, that energy, that love, loving each one just for existing. Very good. Good job. All right, you can open your eyes and let's check in with each person, find out how you're doing. And if we have any questions today. So Swasti, you're first up on my screen. How are you today? Hello. Oh, Hello. Not too good, really. Okay. Oh, well, I couldn't really do the superpower. I have really bad lower back pain today. Um, and it was triggered because of something that happened yesterday. Um, okay. So my mum was like, so my sister was doing something that she shouldn't have been doing. Um, and so my mum basically like, caught her doing that. <laughs> um, and then my sister tries to like justify herself. Um, and then she blames and then she blamed me for something that I haven't done. And she was like, um, he's also been doing this thing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I haven't been doing that. Like, she basically blamed me and it was so strong. And then my mom was like, have you been doing that? Like, there was no trust in that. And I was like, oh my God. Um, and so I've been pretty much like thinking oh. about that all day today. <laughs> Okay, very good, Swasti. And so that is that is a very uh, common thing that you know, being unfairly uh, accused and that kind of thing that that could be a very strong um, program. And the reason for it is again survival. So understanding first of all that the reason those feelings are so strong and it's so difficult to let go of them is because your brain and body are behaving as if you're going to die. And the reason mm. for that is if that person who raises you is cross with you, angry with you, reject you in any way, you could physically die as far as evolution is concerned because we need them to look after us and keep us alive. So understanding that first. Now, 
the second part of it, of course, is so what we want to aim for is so the end result you want is to be able to say when somebody says, did you do it or you didn't do it, you did it or whatever, is for you to be able to go, ah, no, I didn't. Just with no emotion, just like a, a matter of fact, yeah, no, I, I understand why you're asking, but no, I didn't. Okay. And that, right, so that's what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. And so to get there, let's look at what it means. So you, so um, let's break it down into pieces. Uh, so your sister, so what's the first thing that triggers you in that sequence of events? So your sister's done something, your mum catches her, she confronts her, your sister uh, is defensive and blames, and then you are accused, and then your mum asks you mm -hmm. if you did it. So which piece is the first bit where, you, where you're triggered? Um, her, like my sister blaming me for doing what she so did. That's that's where the, the issue starts. So her doing the thing isn't isn't really triggering you. Actually, it is because she did it for a second time, and she was okay. taught the lesson the first time, but she did it again. Okay, good. So let's go there first. So uh, what does it mean to you that she did it a second time? What's the meaning behind that? Well, I've actually done this thing as well when I was her age, which is quite bad too. But okay. I learned the first time, and I've never repeated the mistake again. But uh -huh. she did it literally two weeks later again. Oh, okay. so and what is last time? Yeah. So the fact that you did it before, but you learned your lesson, and so mm -hmm. you do it again. What does it mean that she did it again, and two weeks later? Um, like, uh, I'm not sure if this is the right word, but like defiance, like not not listening to. Very yeah, good. I was quite obedient. I listened because, well, I, at that age, I didn't know it was wrong. To, do what I did and then I was told that this is wrong so I didn't do it she's two years older so I was eight she's ten um but she didn't understand it even for like the first time and then she did it again so and she did it again so you yeah. learned from your mistake but she didn't and so mm -hmm. it's defiance and what's wrong with that how does it how what does it mean how does it affect you yeah I think it's like she thinks she's better than me. Good, very good. Very good. Okay. And so again, this is a very common one for people. And, and you know, because for, for children who are, when we are obeying and we're doing what we're told, especially if that puts us out, if it means we can't do something that we want or we miss out on something, and another child get, does it, that, that's a really strong feeling. Yeah. That, how come they're allowed to and I can't? Whereas yeah. if we were all allowed to or we were all getting away with it, then it's not as bad. Mm -hmm. So very good. So now let's look at that feeling. So she is this something that and you don't have to give any details at all, but is it something you wish you could do? No. Okay. All right. Good. So let's then look at that feeling of defiance. She's being defiant. You can you feel that feeling of her being defiant? Oh yeah, I can imagine her like standing up with a sword in her hand. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, so there's that. Now let's look in your childhood. Where did you experience that in your childhood? And you may have experienced it personally or you may have witnessed someone else. Like somebody else getting away with something that I didn't. Um, Possibly, or someone uh someone who's experiencing that in other words perhaps what looking at someone or, or uh, witnessing someone who isn't allowed to do something but someone else is so the in whatever's there de however defiance is um represented in you any earliest memory and if you don't have one that's absolutely fine as well uh, well just like because i grew up in a like very old-fashioned village um uh people there would like that would always be somebody who did something very wrong. Oh, there you go. And then, and then they had a sibling who didn't. Perfect. Uh, literally <laughs> that. There's the blueprint. <laughs> very <laughs> good. Very good. All right. So let's go. Do you have anybody specific in mind that stands out, or a, a specific yeah. event you have? Mm -hmm. Good. Very good, uh, Swasti. Okay. So let's go to that one and change that. So about how old were you then? approximately uh, probably around but like really young like six seven years old very good okay so we want to change that to the opposite positive and empowering so that everyone's allowed to do everything 
and okay. everybody uses their own judgment. They want to do it. They don't want to do it. They want the consequences or they don't. And every, that's all okay. It's everybody's individual responsibility and choice to do or don't do. So they're given the information. If you do this, then this will happen. And then they get to decide. There's no judgment, no criticism. And can I ask you as well, did your sister, uh, what's your earliest memory of your sister? If you have one. Yeah, I was thinking about this as well. Um, I think it's like, so when she was born, before like before she was born, um, so my parents were in the hospital and I was at home with like somebody taking care of me. Um, and I phoned somebody uh, in India because I was here. Mm -hmm. So it was like family members back in India, like, oh, well, look, my sister's born. Um, like she's just come to us. <laughs> um, and then they said, oh, it's only a girl. I was like, how can you say that to an eight-year-old? Um, yeah, it's probably that Very one. Very good. Like, and so, um, so let me just clarify. I thought you said your sister was older than you. Oh, no, my sister's 10. I'm 18. Okay, okay. I thought you said your sister was 10 and you were eight. <laughs> okay. My sister uh, was 10 when she, she did what I did when I was... And you were eight. I get it now. Right? Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I misunderstood. Okay. So when you call, so that's very, very, that's key. It's only a girl. That's perfect. And that's going to be a foundation of so much. Mm -hmm. So you want to obviously change that, change that now. And what you aiming for is, it, 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 you know, is it a boy or a girl? And you say, it's a girl. It's a sister. And they go, whoa. And you can hear the whoops and there's party poppers and there's pink everywhere because they're so happy it's a girl or however that would be represented for you so that there's great celebration and appreciation that it happens to be a girl rather than a boy okay that's what you're aiming for okay and there may be some work to do in history or you know mm -hmm. culture or whatever and so we i know we spoke about it i think we spoke about it um yeah on I did. friday yeah about uh women being more important and yeah clever. i did that work actually so this should be oh easier. good job yeah. yes so this should be easier and so uh and then once you've done that with the phone have it have a party where you are so that everybody in the room where you are and you're on the phone and you can barely you know you can barely mm -hmm. hear them because everybody wow it's a girl and they're playing uh perhaps they're playing a song like uh, about girls or you know girls just want to have fun or something like that mm -hmm. something that represents a celebration okay of, of females does that sound good yeah definitely thank you good you're very good you're very welcome and there's a lot of references these days as well for that kind of thing because they have gender reveal parties so you could you could also create a, a separate uh, memory to help support this where there was a gender reveal party so before your sister was born they found out it was a girl and so okay. then they did the cake you know where you cut into it and then it's pink and mm -hmm. huge celebration and everyone's going oh that's wonderful you're so lucky i wish i had girls i've got all boys you know i'm hoping the next one is a girl you know that kind of thing create okay. lots of references for that all right okay thank you Good job, Swasti. I'm shaking so, anymore. Okay, it's good. <laughs> pardon? It's really good. So I was shaking when I came. I was like, oh my God. No, I'm Let's, good. All right, that's good. And so now, uh, so that's that piece. That's one piece. So now let's move forward to where you were, um, to where your mum confronts her. Anything there? Any, any negative, any triggers there? When my mum confronted her, when this happened. Yeah, or however that were, that played out. Yeah. So when she was caught, basically. Oh, Anything yeah. there? Or is that... Oh, no, that... triggers there? Does it trigger me? Yes. Um, yeah, it was the same kind of punishment as I got. Okay. And how did that feel to you? Oh, uh, that felt fair because it's the same punishment. So that's okay. And then let's move forward to where she bl she's blaming you. For doing the thing when you didn't do it and how's it were any triggers there now uh yeah that's anger anger yes mm -hmm. okay so now let's look so we've we've got one piece which is the girl thing now let's mm -hmm. look at the piece um of where um it, you're being unfairly accused of something and anything that comes up from early childhood being 
unfairly ac accused of something you didn't do or witnessing someone else being accused of something. Yeah. You so in school, this person gave me like this toy to look after mm -hmm. and um, she took it back, but then she blamed me that I lost it. So she was like, you have to pay me now. <laughs> I said, but you have it. <laughs> I haven't got it. Yeah, that comes. There you go. And about how old were you then? Uh, less than seven. It was in India. So. Sorry, less seven. than seven years old. Oh, less than seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. So definitely change that. So you do a stepping stone memory for that because there are a few different pieces there. So the stepping stone would be, she takes the thing, she says you have to pay her because you still have it, whatever that was, and you say, no, you still have it. And she goes, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> she gives it. All right, so number one, that's a stepping stone. Play that three times. And then you wanna change it to where you, you get to keep the thing. And you go to give it back to her and she says, no, 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 you have it you're my friend okay. so I want to give it to you or something like that okay does that sound good now depending on how all of that feels you may want to just check an additional stepping stone that you could do if if you feel it's needed is that if so be, the first stepping stone you could add in is she takes the thing back she says you have to pay her because you've still got it you say no you've got it she says no she denies it so however that worked and as an adult steps in, your mum, your dad, or a teacher, and says, ah, 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 no, 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 you've got it. You, you've apologised to Swasti. Okay. And she apologises. So I think that's probably an important piece to, to put yeah, in there. I think that would be needed. <laughs> good, yes. So do that first three times, and then the other two. Does that sound good? Yeah. Very good. So now that's that. And now the final piece we want to look at is your mum asking you, if you did it so the lack of trust there yeah. you mentioned the lack of trust so what how's that trigger playing out for you so when you think of your mum asking you instead of just knowing that you wouldn't have done it how does it feel what what emotions are there any triggers um like betrayal good because i just think that she would trust me but she didn't clearly Right. Okay. And did she ask you in front of your sister or did she ask you on your own? No, on my own. On your own. Okay. And so when she asked you, what, what did you say? I said, uh, do you think I would do that at this age? <laughs> I am, I'm literally an adult. Like I, I know what's right and what's wrong. And, and then, then she was I, like, yeah. How did she respond? Um, no, I just went away. I didn't want to listen anymore. So I oh. walked away. So you were you were tr emotionally triggered already uh, yeah. as soon as she asked that. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And what would have been better for her to do? Like if you could wave a magic wand, what would you, how would you have her um, handle it? Just not ask me. Just know that you wouldn't have done it. Yeah, just, just yeah, okay. just know. Okay. So when she asked you that feeling of betrayal, that feeling of really, do you really think I would do it? However that felt, where in your childhood did you feel that? Um, nothing comes. Nothing comes up, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'll work on it myself. Okay, yes. So see if you can find anything else with the same feeling. It may be a different, it may not be someone accusing you of something. It could be something else where it, but it's that same feeling of whatever that feeling is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it could be circumstances or events or objects. It could be anything like that. And, and I'm saying that for others watching this as well. It could be a divorce, a move, uh, moving schools, um, you know, that kind of thing. A, a physical event. Okay, so that's good. And, and so what you're aiming for, of course, is that you rewrite that memory, but you need to change the childhood references first. And you, you can do a stepping stone there, where your mum says, did you do it, whatever she said, and you go, no, mum, I didn't. Uh, but you don't feel triggered. It's just, it's a, it's a matter of fact. It's, you know, it's just answering a question. That's all it is. There's no meaning to it. Mm -hmm. Then you change it to um, when your sister accused you, your mother says, okay, that is not, that's not true. You know Swasti wouldn't have done that. I know Swasti wouldn't have done that, or however that would have played out, so that she, she addresses it immediately 
that line. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, as you actually say that, I think an incident does come up. I think it was, um, I call it the rubber incident or the eraser incident. My yeah. cousin took my eraser and like bit it. <laughs> bit it. Yeah, because uh, he was weird, but he was <laughs> to eat erasers. Um, and then I couldn't take it to school because I needed it for an exam or something the next morning. Right. Um, and I think there was some blame and trust issues there that I bit the eraser. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. Yes. So, so change that. Uh, that's a good one. And then after you've done all of that, the final memory, but only after you've changed all the rest, is that your sister never did it in the first place. Yeah. And you never did it when you were okay. eight either. So neither of you ever did whatever it was. Okay. Okay, that's the final result, but the rest of it really needs to be changed before that so that you change all of the references that it creates. Sound okay. good? Yeah, thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're feeling better now? Yeah, definitely. Oh, good. good job, Swasti. So proud of you, sweetheart. Very thank good. You. Thank you for sharing that one. Thank you for your help. You're very welcome. All right. And Monica. Hi, Monica. Hello. How are you today? Hi. Yes, so far, fine. Thank you. Good. Um, what, what, uh, what, what you are talking now about that was that um, I wish you have been a, a boy. Yes. Yes. It this triggered me <laughs> very uh, much. Very. Good. Yes, and and uh, it made me really sad. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so you've got references for that as well. So uh, like I was saying to Swasti, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've got any particular memory of that, of course, change, do whatever it takes to change that. And then in addition, create new memories of them celebrating. I hope it's a girl. I hope it's a girl. Please be a girl. Please be a girl. Yes, it's a girl. That kind of thing. Party, pink balloons, whatever, it, you know, however that would be represented. Now, if you can't do that, if it's like, you, you, you know, notice what happens when you try and you may need to change their childhoods and or the culture, the religion, whatever reason there was for, for wanting a boy. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it makes sense. So in some, you know, for some things, it's a cultural thing. For some things, it's a religious thing. And for some people, it's just because they've never had a boy or they've already got plenty of girls and they want a boy or they believe that a boy is going to support them. Whatever the, so whatever those reasons are, you want to change those as well if necessary. Mm -hmm. and yes, yes, that sounds good. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about how can I make it like this that I believe it. Okay. So um, what's stopping you from believing it? What's stopping it from believing? How do you know it's not true? Yes, yes, all, all the people around, you, you, you are right uh, with the uh, okay. Culture, yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. So, so you want to change them because why do they think it's better to have a boy than a girl? Is there a reason that you know of or you may not know and that's also okay? Do you have a reason? Do you know why they prefer boys? Uh, yes, uh, it, it was about the name and... Uh, the name, very yes. good. Thank you for bringing that up because that will help others as well. So now you change it to where it's the girl that continues the name. Mm -hmm. So you can add into those memories, oh, good, it's a girl, the name will be continued. Yes, and... Um, um today it's it's not like uh, yesterday the days before because today a girl can take this name and and uh, it's not the question but is it, it is there my my younger daughter she is getting her third child she's pregnant and she has two girls and in my family, my sister, she has a girl. I have two girls. My older daughter, she has a girl. And all are now waiting, perhaps the third, 
a child of my younger daughter is a boy. It's it's so crazy. It's so crazy, and it makes me really sad. And yes. so let's also. So you want to change all of that, and 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 you're right. In today, you know, you could change your name to something completely different, <laughs> but certainly women can keep their ma their maiden name. A lot of people do now. Um, so you want to. The thing with that, though, is that's the conscious mind. We know logically that we it's not the same as it used to be, but the subconscious doesn't know that. The subconscious just holds on to that piece of it needs to be a boy in order to continue the name or it's dangerous. So you want to change all of that. And, and by change it, I mean change anything you remember from your childhood about people commenting or saying that, you know, feeling disappointed or celebrating a boy change it so they're celebrating a girl all of that and in addition to that let's look at um when you say so they're waiting for this third baby they're hoping it's a boy and that feels sad tell me a little bit about that sadness what what's sad about it uh it's sad um that perhaps um the husband of my daughter is then disappointed and then my daughter is disappointed too and perhaps she cannot love this girl like it uh, and should there be it and there it is so that's a key piece so in your childhood did you feel that where you're not loved you're not wanted they're disappointed anything like that oh Yes, no, perhaps not, not so much loved because I, I didn't uh, live with my parents. I, I lived with my grandparents and yeah. they, yes, perhaps this, yes. Yes. So uh, living with your, not living with your parents, your subconscious would have put meaning to that and it mm -hmm. won't necessarily be con uh, logical. So why, why am I not with my parents and children? Because with children and babies, everything is about them because that's just, that's how they experience the world. It's all about, it's usually what's wrong with me. Why don't they want me? They don't understand <coughs> the, the, all the reasons and everything. <coughs> everything means it must be me. It must be me. So there will be stuff there. So it's very important. Have you, um, have you changed any of those memories so that you yes yes them? yes I, I worked on on that but i i always go back and uh like i don't believe it i don't oh. know why all right so when you go back uh how do you know it's not true when you say you don't believe it how do you know it's not true what happens inside you <sighs> how do I know? yes then uh, then there is the the proof i was not together with my parents. I was, wow. I lived with my grandparents. Okay. It, it you, was. Yeah. And when you play the new memories where you're with your parents and perhaps mm -hmm. you go all go to visit your grandparents and it was fun. And then you all go home together. You go home with your parents, create memories like that. So when you play a new memory that you've created where you're with your parents, what happens? Are you able to play that? Does it feel right? Does it feel? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So then if that's the case, I would add some more memories. So I would add brand new memories of you and your parents in your own home. And your parents are saying, oh, we're going to visit uh, your grandparents. And you're like, oh, yay, that's nice. And you all go together to your grandparents. You, you have a nice time there. And then you all leave and go home together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that make now, sense? Yes, that makes sense. Now I, I got it. It's like I, I'm, I betrayal my grandparents, you know, oh, because they yes, did yes. such good things for me. And if I say no, that wasn't, it's, uh, yes, I, I don't sense. honor them. Yes. Yes, that makes perfect sense. That is perfect. Okay. So the way around that is you want to see your grandparents happy to see you when you come to visit and then, you know, saying, Oh, we're going to miss you, but we look forward to when you come back, mm -hmm. those kind of things. So you've got that strong bond with them still spend mm -hmm. time, you know, have memories of you spending time with them, but your parents are there and you go home and you come back either that, or if you prefer, you could all be living together. Mm-hmm. 
you could all be living together, but you, you, you need to keep your parents in there. And then mm -hmm. the answer to, because it's the conscious mind that's saying, oh, but I'm betraying them because they were so good and that, that's the conscious mind. And mm -hmm. the answer to that is love. So you still mm -hmm. have that love and connection and appreciation for them. So there's no, the only way you would be betraying them is if you suddenly hated them or, you know, you were being mean, mm -hmm. but there's no reason for that. Mm -hmm. does that. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And create okay. extra memories of you doing activities with your grandparents mm -hmm. and then you go home, you know, you're, you're with your parents because mm -hmm. that is going to be absolutely key mm -hmm. to who you are and how the world works. And you know, then keep practicing those new memories over and over to make sure that it's really strong and established and mm -hmm. then test, then think mm -hmm. about now this boy the, or the, this child that, you know, the third child, if it's a girl, how do I feel? What happens? So let's say worst case scenario, they, they don't love the baby because she's a girl. How does that feel? And you want to keep going, keep changing your memories until you know that baby's going to be loved. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. So your daughter and her husband, do they not love any children? Are there any children that they don't love? No, no, no. They love them very much. <laughs> so on a logical <laughs> level, mm -hmm. on a logical conscious level, you know that even if the baby's a girl, they're going to love the baby. So yes, it's, about, yes. it's about the references you have for not being loved. Yes. yes. That makes sense. Or, or yes. it appears that you're not loved because you were left with your grandparents. Yes, yes, yes. And my daughter with her um, mother-in-law, she, she don't want to disappoint her. Yes. But it's so crazy. Yes. 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 So, so again, if your daughter doesn't want to disappoint your grand, uh, her mother-in-law, that feeling, where in your childhood did you have that? I don't want to. Disappoint oh yes, my first marriage. <laughs> yes. There you go. And then also childhood. Oh, so yes. there's your first marriage, and then before that, when you were a child, where did you have that feeling of I don't want to disappoint? or witnessing someone who doesn't want to disappoint someone so, ah, about disappointment okay yeah does that make sense because yes. that's all contri contributing to to this uh, experience mm -hmm. of it needs mm -hmm. to be a boy and uh, and, th and that is sad if it's not a boy so uh, so there's uh, all of that and it, so you want to make sure that you've changed everything to do with that as a child mm-hmm Yes, yes. Okay. okay, yes, yes. Thank you very much. You're very okay. welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Mm. Good job. All right. And then Lisa. <clears throat> Hi Lisa. Hi. How are you? Today? Hi. I had a I had an issue with my internet, so it took me a little while to get on. <laughs> oh, that's all right. But it's magnificent Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay, we're all here. I was I was missing you really greatly this weekend. Aww. My my cousin's in surgery right now as we speak, so She's a little nervous this morning, so so I asked uh, Steve for a target for her because she was, um, yeah, she, she'll be okay because she's doing the healing and she said if it wasn't for you all that she would be in she would be a wreck. So she's oh. like really calm. So oh, that's then, wonderful to know. So that's she keeps thinking about your voice and how soothing it is, and she's like, it's so lovely. I hear it over and over and over. <laughs> Ah, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you for sharing that. She said it's the best voice ever. Oh, that's very sweet. Because <laughs> it's like mommy's love, you know. <laughs> oh, well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, so um, I can relate to Swasti with the being blamed for something. When I was when I was very little, like six, my brother was one, uh, just barely learning how to walk. He was a year old. And... Um, he was, uh, he had a key in his mouth and uh, he was in my room and went and he tripped over the corner of my bed and he fell and the key went all the way up to his nasal cavity and I got blamed for it. I was like, I would never hurt a baby, but they really thought I tried to hurt him. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so the, the police had to come and the, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And I was six. So it was like, whoa, okay. 
And then he had to have emergency surgery and it wasn't my fault, but they really thought I did it. And I told my grandmother, I didn't do it, you know? And it's like, and so, uh, yeah, my, my mom even threatened me with a gun. It was bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, it was like, wow, that was a traumatic event. That's but but I kept saying, you know, I, I had to, there was nobody around. So I had to say, you know, I really did not do that. You know, yeah. it was an accident on his part. I wasn't even, you know, around him. He just did it himself. So, so anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so I was like, I had to really process that one because I, I did work on that one too. Cause I was like, you know, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. And so thank you, Lisa, for bringing that up. Cause there's another point I want to make here is that when we look back at childhood experiences, whatever those experiences were, we're looking through the eyes of the adult. So we, we remember the experience in that, but we are remembering it through the filters of the adult we now are. So very often we can see the reasoning, we can see, well, that wasn't as bad or that was bad or whatever it is. But if you think from the child's point of view, it's huge, it's all huge. And that particular incident must have been extremely traumatic number one the event itself number two being accused and you didn't do it yeah. <laughs> and so the unfairness and the injustice of that and number three the police being called all <laughs> and, and your mother threatening you, you with a gun those are all huge huge pieces of trauma yeah. so you want to make sure that you've changed each piece as well okay that's a good idea yeah yeah, yeah, because so, they brought my dad in uh, um, a police car and everything. You know, the yeah. highway patrol came. Yeah, it was really weird, and so we all went to the hospital right away with an ambulance. And and I I never forget my brother. You know, he was in the like their uh, hospital crib, and he was screaming, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was really strange, but yeah, and it was like really hard to believe. I was like, I would think to myself when I was in the hospital waiting, I was thinking wow, I didn't do that. And they really thought I did it. And I was like, how could they think I did it? But, but my mom felt crazy. bad because she, I think because she, he was such a young infant that she, I think she felt bad that uh, she, she wasn't, wasn't watching him. Yeah. So she, she's like, okay. <laughs> exactly. Because if she didn't blame you, then it's, it's her fault. And that's yeah, right, right, unthinkable. Right, right. right. I think that's what, what it really was. Because I was a little kid, so she's like, yeah, I'll put the blame on her. <laughs> So yeah, well, uh, probably not necessarily in that way. It was probably automatic as yeah. a survival instinct. Yeah, a panic. Yeah, just yeah, uh, exactly. automatically. Like, oh, what do panic I do? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you may need a due. In fact, I would definitely recommend a due justice on that. Oh, okay. Letter. Yeah. So how would I how would I uh, go about that though? I mean, like to for due justice, like something like that. So I would, so who, so your mum accused you and uh -huh. wouldn't believe you. Who uh -huh. else was there who didn't, didn't believe you when you said you didn't do it? My, my father wasn't there because he was at work. They went to go pick him up, but he came and then the ambulance came and stuff like that. And that was it. The, the police officer had never talked to me. So okay. So it's, it's yeah. the mother. So your mum write a letter to her. Okay. How could you not believe me? I did oh. not do it whatever comes up and allow all of it to come out with no okay. excuses, no okay. reasoning, be as unreasonable as possible, swear, use all caps, lots of exclamation marks, <laughs> really, really let it happen. So this yeah. is the equivalent of beating a pillow or screaming, oh, okay. screaming yeah. under a, a railway bridge or whatever. You've got to really let it all out onto the page. No one's ever going to see it. And I'm saying this for those new people as well. No one's ever going to see it. And uh, you, you, but but you do need to get it all out because if you leave anything yeah. in, that's like cleaning out. Oh yeah. Most <laughs> of an infection of a wound and leaving the rest. It's like <laughs> the it's like the booger that you can't flick off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Good point. Yes. So make sure and for anyone um, who doesn't know what the due justice technique is, Steve, if you or who can't remember how to do it or anything, Steve, if you would put the link to the due justice um, technique in the description of the video, please. And uh, we will, um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll share that. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm kind of hesitating a little bit is because I actually have it in front of me. So I am gonna put it in the chat for those of you who are on this call. So you have access to that. So if you go to that link, you'll be able to download the Ooh. information on the due justice. One, one question I have about that is like, 
will there be like, okay, so when you write a do justice letter, somebody was asking me also that, and I'm curious also myself, um, will, will things come up after you write it? Like, um, uh, like things that you still need to work on, like residue, will that surface and then you go, okay, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. And that happens uh, with most people, I think. It certainly oh, happens okay. even me. So not necessarily immediately, but Steve and I have done several due justice letters. You know, we I've done at least five myself over the over a couple of years or so. Um, and what I've used it for um, sort of in over the last year or so is when I couldn't think of what the reference is. Like I'm thinking, so why am I still experiencing such and such? I wonder what that is. And I haven't been able to find anything in my childhood. Then I just write about the thing so one of mine was uh, frustration with technology. So if the website's not working the way it should or something is not working, so not people, but technology, then I started writing what the blah, 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 you know, and I just, <laughs> I just kept, you know, why uh, that kind of thing. And then it, then it brings up insights that came out automatically because writing something, especially writing it by hand, accesses different uh, information and data. Mm -hmm. To when you're just thinking yeah. that's beautiful because um it gets rid of all that heavy energy so that's awesome thank you <laughs> exactly. you're very very welcome lisa i love thank you thank you for sharing you. <laughs> I love you very much good job sweetheart thank you all right and then chris hi chris how are you today oh we can't hear you very well oh sorry maybe i need another earbud well, I'm so pleased to be here, and I'm sorry I was, a, yeah, I'm sorry I was a little late. Um, I don't, I, I think there are quite a few questions that need answering. So I'm very, <laughs> uh, everything's perfect for me as ever. Um, okay. Oh, I, just listening to everyone is always amazing. Monica and Lisa just now, and Swasti, and and then while I was listening to Monica, I had a lovely, I just. My family loved me so much came into my head. Good. So thank you, Monica. However, I, I wished I'm, I'm sending that to you too because that, that your, whatever you were saying triggered that response from me. So Good. I very humbly send that. And um, I've got lots of little bits and pieces, but um, it's just lovely to be here. <laughs> good. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. All right, good job, and thank you for for that. That's lovely to hear. All right, and then yes, yeah, so there's a there's a couple of questions in the chat. Hi, Odil, could you? Sorry, Steve. Nope, I just wanted to. I was going to point one? out the same question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, could you explain what kind of childhood memories we have to seek when the problem is strong anxiety and panic attacks? Okay, and then there's a couple of people who, uh, uh, or this, uh, this, this is a, a question others have as well. Okay, so um, strong anxiety and panic attacks. So uh, the first question would be to identify when does this happen? Does it happen at a particular time or when you think particular thoughts or because it's going to vary for different people? So step one is how do you know that it's happening or how do you know that it's there? So when you, when a panic attack or anxiety happens, can you become the observer and notice what, what was happening inside you and what triggered it if, if, the, if you can? And if you can't, that's absolutely okay as well. So then the next step is where in your childhood did you, find, did you first feel anxiety or panic uh, as a child and and it may or may not be there and just go for the earliest one that you can remember and remember it may be unrelated so let's say right now uh, the anxiety happens whenever I have to go somewhere where, where whenever I have to go and meet up with people so I've got social anxiety now so that's that's that that's the trigger. Now, what I'm looking for in my childhood is that same feeling of anxiety, but it may have nothing to do with being with other people. The anxiety in my childhood could have been, you know, uh, being lost in a supermarket or, um, 
having to move house or move schools or divorce, my parents getting divorced or my dog dying. It could be anything, but it'll be the same feeling of anxiety or panic or whatever that is. Very often panic attacks can be unrelated to the, you know, the original cause can be unrelated to the thing that causes panic attacks now. And they could, it can sometimes be from a physical situation, being held down, being locked up some locked somewhere, um, being you know physically uh, attacked in some way, that kind of thing. So, anxiety and panic attacks, like all other in, um, negative emotions, are stress chemicals. So it's the fight, freeze, flight states. So your body and your brain are going into the same state if you were faced with a wild animal, if you're, you were in physical danger. So that's what's happening. And so your brain has made a, co a connection between something and danger. So I've given that example of the story of the twins in, an, in another episode. And you can check the show notes uh, to see where that story of the twins, which episode that's in. And that is a great example of something completely unconnected that causes that, uh, that fight, freeze, flight reaction. So I hope that helps, but if not, uh, let me know a few more details or what you need clarification on and um, we'll do that. So then your, your step is you start with the superpower, fill those feelings and, and don't wait for the panic attack to do that. You know, do it when you're not stressed. Superpower, love the feelings of panic and the, the anxiety, love whatever may be causing it. And then when you're feeling in a good state, then go looking for those references and change them. But don't go looking for them when you're feeling the anxiety and when you're in the middle of a panic attack or anxiety, because that's just going to make it worse. So make sure you're feeling, you do whatever it takes to feel good first before you go and look and then change to the, of course, the opposite positive empowering, create new ones if necessary, and then practice them. And then think about the last time you felt a panic attack or felt anxiety and see if you can love it, see if it still feels the same and do that back and forth thing so that the end goal you're looking for is when you think about a panic attack or anxiety, you don't, you feel love or, or appreciation, that kind of thing. Because for a lot of people with anxiety and panic attacks, one of the triggers is worried about having anxiety and worried about having another panic attack, which of course, puts those stress chemicals into the system. Uh, you say, yes, that helps a lot. Good. Um, I have a lot of memories of being in experience where I couldn't breathe. That, that'll do it. That's, uh, that's key. So definitely change those. So go to the first, you know, the earliest one that you can remember. And it doesn't matter if, when it was, but just the first thing that, uh, that comes up. Um, and you say, I think it has to be with that. Absolutely. Absolutely spot on. Yes. So when you think of the earliest one, do whatever it takes to change that so that you've always been able to breathe. So you may need some, uh, depending on the situations, you may need some stepping stones where someone stepped in and helped you, someone saved you, uh, someone did whatever, the, what, whatever needed to be done so that you were then able to breathe and you were safe and then uh, change uh, the whole thing to the opposite positive empowering. And um, yes, so just make sure that you've, you've changed those uh, moving forward and then think, but that makes perfect sense. Panic attacks, anxiety uh, based on not being able to breathe. Absolutely. All right. So you're very welcome, sweetheart. Very welcome. Good job. All right. And Steve, is there anything else? Uh, so Katrina says had had a great weekend and it was all and it was all down to you and me changing my memories. Check into tomorrow. Oh, very good. I'm so glad. Thank you for sharing that. Good job. I've uh, got another. Uh, the question is: I have a question regarding my daughter. I feel very sad for her because she is off. She often attracts the same situation in which she's in a group of three and being left out. It happened last year at school, and then this year, when there are three, it never works. She's the one they don't want to play with. Then yesterday, it happened again. It really breaks my heart. I wonder why this repeats over and over, and how can I help her? Okay, very good. And um, 
yeah so and and, and it's going to depend on that uh, on that dynamic so without a little bit more information it's tricky so let me just read that again so i felt very sad she often attracts the same situation. She's in a group of three and being left out. Okay, so what's wrong? Oh, hi, Caro. Can I unmute you? Then I can ask you some questions. There we go. All right, so thank you for sharing this, love. All right, so how old is your daughter again? Uh, she's five. She's five, so she's still little. So um, how, do you, how do you know that this happens? Um... When, when she's with a friend and, and a do, another one comes in, then yeah. suddenly they don't want to play with her anymore. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, uh, and it happens all the time. She, she's friend with someone and then there's another one coming in and then they don't, don't want to, to be with her. And, and it's often the same situation. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday uh, we were invited at my brother's and uh, she has a cousin, uh, she's the same age, and I don't know why they invited a friend of her. Mm -hmm. And so my, my daughter was left out because, and she wanted to be, I mean, she wanted to play with her cousin. And so mm -hmm. I don't understand why they invited this girl, but anyway, and so she was very sad and disappointed to be like, I mean, left out. Yeah. And I don't know why this happens all the time. I don't know how I can help her to... Okay, so the first question is, how do you know about these incidents? So do you witness it or does she tell you about it? Um, both. Both. Okay, so the, can you remember the first couple of times it happened? Um, it hap yes, at school. The first time it was at school when she started school, yes. Okay, and did you see it or did she tell you about it? Um, I think she told me about it, yes. Okay, good. And so when she tells you about these situations, how, what, what is, how does she tell you, how does she look or feel or what's the, what's the atmosphere there? Um, she, she, she's a bit disappointed and, um, and a bit sad because she, she, she says uh, I've been playing alone because uh, they didn't want to play with me. Okay, good. And how do you respond to that? What do you, how do you feel? Uh, do you I, I don't feel good, but I, I try not to show it. So I, um, I, I try to, uh, I say next time it will be okay. Maybe this time they wanted to, to play with some, something else or, you know, to play another game or I, tr I try to find something to say. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't really know how to react because uh, I don't want to, to, to make it worse, but you know. Yeah. Okay, so now let me ask you this. Uh, that feeling of being left out, uh, playing alone, being left out, whatever that feeling is that you feel for her, mm -hmm. where, in your child, where in your childhood did you experience that? Uh, I, I don't really remember. Okay. But there must be something there. Yeah. But yeah. You have a reference for it, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. And I'll tell you what, because what does it mean that, so, you know, two people are, are playing or whatever, and the third one comes in and those two interact. What does that mean? Um, I don't know. As, as far as... As far as I can play with them, it's okay. But uh, it's often like I saw I saw what one of her friends, and she said, "Oh, um, the other one was sick," and she said, "But uh, I will play with Emma because uh, the other one is sick." Uh, like she's, you know, like she wouldn't, but because the other one is sick, then she she would, you know, and so she told me that. She told me that one morning when I was talking to her and saying hello, and I was like, okay, but you know how they are when they are kids, they just yes. say yes. what they, and, and so I, that's, that's okay. why I feel a bit sad for her. Yeah. And I don't know. So, so anyway. The way to help her is number one, it doesn't matter why. I wouldn't worry about why right now. Number one is get into the superpower state and fill yes. her, your daughter with love regardless mm -hmm. whether she experiences yes. this or not and fill all the people, the friends, the other kids, 
whether they play with her or not. So unconditional love, definitely, regardless. Yes, then yes. in addition to that, I would go to your own childhood memories and create plenty of memories with you, everybody surrounding you. Mm -hmm. You are safe as you are. Now, in addition to that, from a practical point of view, is there anything you can um, give her that is a talking point or a fun thing that she can take to school with her or a, something like that? Because at that age, children are connecting with based on what you've got something I don't have. I want that. I want to be with you. Yes. Yes. And yes, I want to, and, and you make me feel good and, and you, it doesn't matter. You don't seem to make me, you know, it's all about, so every child, it's about them, not about the others. It's about what can I gain? How am I feeling? You know, yes, and that's yes. just survival. So okay. if, if you can also give her skills that uh, people skills that we all use compliment someone mm -hmm. tell someone you know uh, but without expecting anything back so yes. just you know i like your hair and then moving on so not not waiting for a response or anything and here's a huge thing that uh, my sister taught me this to do with children but your you could teach your daughter to do this as well so you know when people meet meet children for the first time they try to engage with them and children are like cats. <laughs> if you try and make them, you try and get their attention, they're not going to be interested. They're going to be. Yeah. But what's the best thing to do, if you want a child to connect with you, the very best thing you can do is ignore them to begin with. Not in a bad way, just, yeah. but, but you put your focus on something interesting. So what my sister would do is, you know, we were all like trying to connect with the child and my sister would just go and play with one of their toys. <laughs> she would just pick up one of their toys and oh this is nice and they would always come to yes her. yeah so that is what your daughter can do let give her that power empower her to have something that she's busy doing she doesn't need the others she can mm -hmm. play with this thing or read this thing or do this thing whatever it is yeah. and then she's attracting them rather than trying to trying to get get them to play with her yeah. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank and you if much. she is doing something, so not just doing something, but having fun. So mm -hmm. if she's looking like she's enjoying something, they will come to her because they'll want whatever she's got. Okay. Yes. Does that help? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Good. You're very, very welcome. Good job, Carol. And well done for sharing, sweetheart. All right, Steve, anything else that I haven't... No, I think we're all we're all good to go. All done. Okay, very good. So let's uh, let's do the targeting. If you could send me uh, the target. Oh, thank you, Camilla. <laughs> so uh, she says beautiful nails and necklace. Uh, <laughs> that color is my target color. Oh, good. Yay. <laughs> all right then. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open. Good job. And go into your superpower state. However, you do that. So by repeating your word or phrase or using your anchor or by focusing on your subject. And allow your heart to open, your chest to expand and allowing that light to shine out, your power. Very good, and allow that light, that energy to spread down to your toes, up to your top of your head, and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love. Very good. And now allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing. Very, very good. Now allow that light or energy to fill your subject, the person, animal, place or activity you love. 
loving them exactly as they are. And then maintain that state of love, maintain that light or energy filling your subject as you imagine that they reject you. They don't want to be with you or they don't have the qualities that you admire, love and appreciate about them and keep that going, keep that power going. Feel how strong it is, loving them exactly as they are, no matter what. Very good. All right, so let's go to Lisa. Fill Lisa with that same light, that energy, from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love, Lisa, just for existing. Very good. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Lisa and fill her cousin who's in surgery at the moment. Fill Lisa's cousin with that same light, that energy, exactly as she is. Fill the surgery with that same light, that energy, that the procedure the surgeon and everyone who's involved, fill them all with that light, that energy, that love, no matter what. Shining that light into any darkness, no matter what the outcome is and no matter what the recovery will be, love it exactly as it is. Shining that light into any darkness. Very good. And then allow that light, that energy to overflow from Lisa and fill the financial circumstances, situations and events of everyone on the planet. No matter what, loving it all exactly as it is, shining that light into any darkness. Very good. And now over to Chris. Fill Chris with that same light, that energy, that love, from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips, love Chris just for existing. Very good. And now allow that light, that energy to overflow from Chris and fill her daughter who's struggling with relationship issues. Love Chris's daughter from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Fill her with that light, that energy, and love her just for existing. No matter what, whether she's having relationship issues or not, fill the relationship with love and light and energy no matter what, exactly as it is, so shining that light into any darkness. Very good. And now to Monica. Fill Monica with that same light, that energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips, love Monica just for existing. Very good. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Monica and to fill her daughter her younger daughter who's pregnant with the same light, this energy, this love. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Monica's daughter just for existing. And now allow this light, this energy to fill her baby with the same light, this energy. Loving that baby, regardless of whether it's a boy or a girl, regardless of what it's going to be like, and regardless of how anyone feels about that baby. Loving that baby just for existing, exactly as it is. And loving Monica's daughter, whether she's disappointed or not, loving the disappointment, shining the light into any darkness, and then allowing that light, that energy to overflow from Monica's daughter and to fill her husband with the same light, this energy, 
from the tips of his toes to the top of his head and out to his fingertips. Love him just for existing, exactly as he is and whether he's disappointed or not, however he feels about the baby, love him exactly as he is, shining the light into any darkness. And now the same with his mother. So allow that light, that energy to overflow from him and fill his mother with that same light, that energy, shining that light into her from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out her fingertips, filling any fears, any judgments, any criticisms with that light, that energy, that love and loving her exactly as she is, no matter what, and no matter how she feels about the baby, loving it all anyway. Very good. And now to Swasti, filling Swasti with that same light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Swasti just for existing. Very good. And now allow that light, that energy to fill the part of Swasti that feels unjustly blamed. Fill that part with that light, that energy, loving it anyway, even if she feels unjustly blamed, shining that light into any darkness. And those doing the blaming and the whole situation of being blamed, shine that light through into all of it, loving it all exactly as it is and even if it doesn't change that's where the power is good job and now over to camilla fill camilla with that same light that energy that love from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips love camilla just for existing exactly as she is and allow that light, that energy, to fill the fear of never being totally okay. Whatever that fear is, wherever it comes from, whatever's causing it, love all of it. Shining that light into any darkness, whether she's okay or not, shining that light in, loving it all exactly as it is, that's the power. Very good. And now to carry, fill carry with that same light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love carry just for existing. Shining that light into any darkness in her life. Good job. And now to Caro, fill Caro with that same light, that energy, from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Caro just for existing. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Caro and fill her daughter with that same light, that energy, from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Caro's daughter just for existing. And whether she plays, whether others want to play with her or not, love her exactly as she is, shining that light into any darkness, no matter what. And imagine Caro's daughter, her five-year-old daughter, having that power shining out from her and affecting everyone and everything around her. Shining that light into any darkness around her. Very good. And now to all those who are off camera and all those who are watching the recording, fill all of those people with the same light, that energy, that love, loving each one just for existing. And search. Very good. 
And now think of yourself later today and whatever you'll be doing or experiencing or feeling, fill that version of you with that same light, that energy, that love, no matter what, shining light into any darkness. And now allow this light, this energy, to expand from you and fill the whole planet, everyone, everything, every circumstance, every event. Feel that power as you shine that light into everything and everyone, all the darkness, and surge. And surge again. Very good. And you can open your eyes if you haven't closed. All right. So that's it for today. And we will see you all back. I hope that was helpful. And we'll see you all back tomorrow. Same time, same place. And have a wonderful rest of your day. And see you all there. Lots of, you're very welcome, everyone. Lots of love. Bye-bye now.